find rest in Fortress and my rock Hope for life, my hiding place Refuge and my God You are found my home Shelter from the storm Shaken. My soul finds rest in you. Fortress and my rock. Hope for life, my hiding place. Refuge and my God. I find my home. shelter from the storm. I'll pour out my heart to you. Lean upon your care. I will put my trust in you. I will put my hope in you. I will stand up on your word. I will not be shaken. Holding on to what I know Cause I know you're always there I will not be shaken I will not be shaken I will not be moved I'm leaning on the throne Cause you died for me And called me to your own To blow. I will stand my ground. I will not be moved. I will not be shaken. I will not be moved. I'm leaning on the throne. But you died for me and called me to a road. Even when the strongest winds begin to blow, I will stand my ground. I will not be moved. I will not be shaken. I will put my trust in you. I will put my hope in you. I will stand up on your word. I will not be shaken. I will let my faith show. Hang on to what I know. Cause I know you're always there. I will not be shaken. I will not be shaken. All right, let's pray. Let's pray that we would learn to put our trust in Jesus. When the storms come, unexpected storms come into our lives, when trouble comes, when temptation comes. Heavenly Father, we pray this evening. These things come into our life unexpectedly, suddenly. And the Bible tells us to be prepared to face them. We pray that we would be prepared, O oh Lord, to face these kind of problems every day in our Christian journey. Help us, O oh Lord, to put our trust in you. Help us to put our hope in you and you alone. Help us to trust your word. This evening, as we study your word, O oh Lord, Father, we pray that we would be able to store this word in our hearts so that when troubles come, we can trust in your promises. We can hold on to your word and overcome these troubles in our lives. And we would never be shaken. We give ourselves into your hands. Speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Luke 16. <clears throat> Luke 16. It's a story. Jesus is saying one more story. Last week we saw the story of the prodigal son. And today we're going to look at the parable of the 
the story of the manager who was very unfaithful okay the unfaithful manager all right i'm going to read from verse 1 to verse 13 okay luke chapter 16 verse 1 to 6 to 13 he goes he also said to the disciples there was a rich man who had a manager and charges were brought to him that this man was wasting his possessions and he called him and said to him what is this that i hear about you turn in the account of your management for you can no longer be manager and the manager said to himself what shall i do since my manager is taking the management away from me i am not strong enough to dig <clears throat> and i am ashamed to beg i have decided what to do <clears throat> so that when i am removed from management people may receive me into their houses so summoning his master's debtors one by one he said to the first how much do you owe my master he said 100 measures of oil he said to him take your bill and sit down quickly and write 50 then your bill then he said to another how much do you owe he said 100 measures of wheat he said to him take your bill and write 80 the master commended the dishonest manager for his shrewdness for the sons of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light and i tell you make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous wealth so that when it fails they may receive you into the eternal dwellings one who is faithful in a very little is also faithful one who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much and one who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much if then you have not been faithful in the unrighteous wealth who will entrust to you the true riches and if you have not been faithful in that which is another's who will give you that which is your own <clears throat> no servant can serve two masters for either he will ha- hate the one and love the other or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other you cannot serve god and money you cannot serve god and money right so <clears throat> this is jesus again telling one more story the story is about a manager and as you lo- see the story you find out that this manager is not a good person see now this seems like another occasion altogether not the like, previous you know place where jesus was telling his um, you know the whole group of people who had gathered this is actually to his disciples verse one he also said to his disciples so this looks like an another opportunity another time when he's only talking to his disciples now in verse 14 <coughs> it looks like the pharisees were listening in which means they were also there listening to what he was teaching the disciples the pharisees who were lovers of money heard all these things see so they were also standing close by so they also heard it but this lesson was taught specially to his disciples what is the story about the story is about a very rich man and to manage his property he had a man who is a manager also <clears throat> he was managing both his property and his wealth his money and in the story the rich man the boss he has come to know that the steward the the servant the manager has cheated him he had wasted his goods that's what it says wasted wasted his possessions how could how uh, how uh maybe he 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 took some things home you know maybe he stole things from his master maybe he did not put it correctly in the record we don't know but he has cheated and the master has come to know it now once the master has come to know it he knew that this fellow cannot be trusted he has to be fired he has to be kicked out of the job so the master going to kick him out of the job that the steward came to know see <coughs> so the steward knew it then itself <coughs> what what is this that i hear about you turn in the account of your management see so master is asking give me a correct account and then leave whatever you owe me pay and then you leave the job see so this is a final warning for this man he is going to be fired from his office is fired from his job but before he gets thrown out of the job he has to give an account of everything now <clears throat> same is true about us also god is our boss he is our master and he has entrusted a lot of things to us definitely three things god has given us 
one is our time you know god has given us all 24 hours each day time he's going to ask us what did you do with your time that i gave you everybody has got only 24 hours if you live in india or you live in the west or if you live in africa or you live in australia everybody has only 24 hours the president of america has 24 hours the chief minister of kerala has 24 hours michel has 24 hours abigail has 24 hours manu has 24 hours samuel has 24 hours. joan has 24 hours everybody has 24 hours so god gives you these 24 hours and then he asks us the question what did you do with the days that i gave you what did you do with the hours that i gave you so each day we are responsible for every minute that we waste every hour that we waste so god wants us to utilize our time correctly so he has given us each our own share of time then second thing he has given us is <coughs> he has given us lot of talents everybody has got a variety of talents now you guys were showing me your talents in acting right in communicating with your actions but lot of people have uh, talents in singing drawing people have talents in um, you know administration they have talents in um, playing instruments different 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 talents and we have to give an account to god who gave us all these talents you know if you are born with these talents or we are growing up and learning these talents and we have to give an account to god what did i do with my guitar you know what did i do with my singing talent what did i do with all these things that god blessed me with you know all the abilities that god gave me did i use my strength to help the right people did i use my singing to encourage people did i use it to bless people or did i use it to you know hurt people you know sometimes we'll be shouting into somebody's ears bad words calling them all you know uh, nonsense and then what happens you have wasted your talent you know you wasted your talent of speech so many people do that they waste their talents they use it either for you know uh, making money or for making fame for themselves but they forget that you know our talents have been given to make other people happy to bless the lives of people around us and to glorify the name of god so we don't use our talents in the right way god is going to ask you give an account of it okay so our time god is going to ask about it our talents god is going to ask about it and finally the resources that you get you know god is giving us food god is giving us clothes god is giving us vehicles god is giving us so many things our houses our rooms and if you don't use it properly god is going to hold each one of us accountable what did you do with your room what did you do with your with your pencil box what did you do with your books did you take care of it did you use it properly or did you waste it so that's what god is going to ask us so all these things we have received from god we have to give an account of everything that we have got because he is the master and we are his servants we are the managers we are only the managers we are supposed to take care of it we are not the owners you know some people live as though they are the owners of it they can do whatever they want they will they will break a, you know a pencil box and they'll say oh it was mine you know they will tear their books apart and they'll say oh it was my book no actually it's not your book it's actually god gave you the book to use it properly but you have wasted it see so when you waste it you and i have to give an account of it to god okay so <clears throat> all our time our talents and resources we have to give an account of all that we did to god so just like the servant got the question from the master we also will get it now suddenly the servant started thinking what should i do master is going to take this job away from me what should i do see he knew that his poor management was exposed right he knew that all the other options were not at all attractive what are they i cannot dig hey he is not physically very strong to go and dig holes in the in the ground you see he is not going to do hard labor so he is not physically fit for that and he is ashamed to beg he can't go to people and ask for money please give me some money sir please please let me borrow 100 rupees from you he doesn't want to do that that is a shameful thing see so he cannot dig and he cannot beg for money so what should he do then he got a suddenly an idea and he, he knew that his master had given things on loan to many people so he called some of the debtors and he said come 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 you guys come i'm the manager still i haven't lost my job you see so you give your bill how much do you owe my master they said 100 oh immediately he said for you discount 50 okay so what is he doing 
he's again cheating his master only but he's letting the other guy get away with 50 you see because he owed the master 100 is it correct your bill don't write 100 you give only 50 so this fellow who is looking at the manager will say oh manager you are my dear friend like how samuel said no abigail you are the most uh, favorite person for me right now you know why because he was able to guess the right word you see same way this manager was going to help this man instead of owing the master 100 he just cut it short to 50 so this man has to give back only 50 so he was so joyful that he would love the manager he would give anything if the manager asked for it so he said when i go down to the people they should welcome me into their homes so he played a trick again he again cheated his master of all the things that these people owe the master so he said okay for your bill i will correct it from 100 to 50 so now you owe my master only 50 another fellow he called how much wheat do you owe 80 kilos oh 80 and sorry 100 kilos so he cut the 100 and cut write it as 80 so 20 kilos you save again so, so each of these people were saving money because of this corrupt manager now was the manager doing the right thing no he was again cheating the master but jesus is not saying that oh because the corrupt manager was cheating cheating is right that is not what jesus was trying to say what did the master say let's look at that verse 8 the master commented commended the dishonest manager for his shrewdness see shrewdness is thinking wisely about the situation right in front of you and acting in the most appropriate way that is what shrewdness is okay you see there is a problem and you try to solve it in the best possible way that you can and jesus says the people of the world this manager is a person of the world this manager is a corrupt person he is an evil person but when he put his brain he was able to get some friends the debtors to the master they became his friends because he helped them to reduce their what they owed to the master their bill to the master you see so he was able to gain some friends now he was going to lose all the favor from his master he was going to lose the job from his master but even if the master would have kicked him out he could have gone to these fellows and say give, give me a job man and this uh, fellow who got the discount will definitely consider giving this man a job because now he has become his friend you see so this is what this man did and jesus is saying he is the wise man he is a shrewd man he is a wicked man he is a cunning man he cheated his master but jesus said the way he acted was very shrewd and he said the children of the kingdom need to be shrewd and wise like this man so they should be you know so the sons of the world are shrewd they are very wise see so uh, that is what jesus is appreciating he's not appreciating so the shrewd and what's the difference between shrewd and cunning i thought they were the same thing yeah the shri- being shrewd Uh, uh what jesus was actually saying is that the businessmen of those days they were wise they were bold and they were forward thinking you know they were very much you know looking at the situation and trying to adapt to that okay so what jesus is saying is that that kind of shrewdness being bold and wise and forward thinking that is what i mean it's not like he he did not want to actually purposely cheat this man now but he was trying to make his life easier when he loses the job you see so that is what jesus calls shrewdness so he's not being cunning there he's actually using his wisdom to somehow make his life convenient better when he loses his job with the master you see so jesus is just saying that you know be more shrewd not cunning but be more wise because many at times you know uh people of god they don't manage the things that god gave to them wisely so jesus is saying that they don't manage their time children of god don't manage their talents and children of god don't manage their resources properly why because the dishonest man the steward the manager is a very good example because he knew when he was going to be called for giving an account he took that seriously he took that seriously so same way christians should also take this idea seriously that we will also be called to account see 
Now, if we don't have anything to hide, if we have used our wealth and talents and time properly, we don't have anything to fear. We'll be full of joy. You see, if we manage our ma masters, uh, you know, things that he has given us correctly, then we have nothing to fear. See, so what did this man do? He took advantage of his po position. You know, he still had the manager's position. He took advantage of his position and made sure that his future is comfortable. See, so we are also supposed to do the same thing. Take advantage of your position now. What is your position now? You're a child of God. And what should you do? You should get as many people into the kingdom of God as you can by using all that God has given you. That takes shrewdness. See, be, be in that way. The actual word cunning is a very wicked word, but I'm saying cunning in a good way. Be all the more thinking, you know, how can I get this friend of mine to become a child of God? How can I get this friend of mine to become a part of the kingdom of God? Do everything for that so that you will use your time, your talents and your resources to get your friend to draw closer to Jesus. See? So Jesus says here, the sons of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. You see, if we pursued the kingdom of God with the same passion, like how the children of the world is pursuing after money, okay, popularity, fame, if we go with the same passion, if we follow the kingdom of God, then the generation that we are living in right now, the world that we are living in right now would be entirely different. You know, when I went to uh, North India, we went, uh, you know, uh, almost, uh, uh, we were in Nagpur and we were, we had gone 60 kilometers outside of Nagpur and Nagpur is a very big city. It is the winter capital of India. Okay. It's, it's a beautiful city, but just outside over 50 kilometers outside of the city, there are very, very poor villages. The government has done nothing to help these villages. Very poor villages. Some of the villages don't even have electricity. Some of them don't even have running water. They don't have enough pipes and they don't have enough uh, irrigation. Nothing is there. No facilities. Children don't even go to school in those villages. Very, very poor villages. So I went to visit some of these villages. And to my shock, I saw that most of these villages had Coca-Cola there. They had Pepsi there. All the shops were full of Pepsi and Coca-Cola bottles. And every house that I visited, they had cable TV in their house. Dish antenna, cable TV, everything was there. See, they did not have enough water. They did not have uh, enough uh, you know, food. They did not have money to send the children to school. They did not have enough uh, you know, pipes and you know, all those essentials were not there. But they had enough Pepsi, Coca-Cola. They had cable TV to watch. Okay. Now, my question is, you know, how long Christians have been in India, right? Christianity has been in India for more than 250 years. But do we have, where were we? Yes, we are talking about the manager, right? Yes. So the manager was a very shrewd man and he used this to get out of a tight situation. No? So what we were saying is that we have to do best for the master. And we have to be using all our brain to see how our friends and relatives who don't know Jesus should come into the kingdom of God. They, who they are, if they're not followers of the word of God, how can you make you and I make them followers of God's word? See, so Jesus is saying his assessment is very correct. He says, the sons of the world are more shrewd in this generation than the sons of light. So if we followed, you know, with the same passion, things would be different. No, that's why I was saying 200 years we have been living in India, but Christianity has not penetrated into the villages of North India. Christianity has not penetrated deep into the hearts of people all over India. Why? Because Christians have not been thinking shrewdly. They are not thinking wisely. They are not using their time, their talents, and their resources for leading people to Christ. Then Jesus tells what is the most important thing in that passage? And you'll find it in <coughs> verse, uh, I think it is just after that, right? Uh, I tell you, 
make friends. Verse 9, I tell you, make friends for yourself by means of unrighteous wealth, so that when it fails, they may receive you into the eternal dwellings. See? So, you know, what, what wealth you have, okay, uh, the word uh, uh, used in the old King James is mammon. Okay? The, the, the wealth that you have, be willing to sacrifice it so that you can get friends here. Right? So, this is what Jesus is saying. The friends that you get here can be influenced into the kingdom of God. You can tell them about Jesus. But if they are not friends with you, you have not used your money wisely. You have not used your talents wisely. And so you can't tell a stranger, you can't go and tell a stranger about Jesus. And they would not, they would not even listen to you. They say, okay, why should I believe in Jesus? He's not even my God. So when you go and approach a friend, that friend will at least listen to the gospel that you are preaching. See, So use your money wisely. Money is an unfaithful thing. It is an unrighteous thing. It is not very good. People can use money to bribe people. People can use money for all kinds of wrong things. But using money for the right thing is leading people to become your friends. And once you make them friends, you can easily talk to them about Jesus and what he has done for them. So use it wisely. That's what he's saying. You know? So that they may, uh, you, uh, they may receive you into the eternal dwellings. Okay? So everlasting home. So keep your eye on the everlasting home. That is the forever place that we have to bring these people into. So use all that you have to attract them into the eternal home that God has for you. Then Jesus also says one important thing. If you are unfaithful in little things, you'll be unfaithful in big things. But if you are faithful in little things, you'll be faithful in big things. Right? If you have not been faithful in what is another's, who will give you that which is your own? Now, eternal life, God is going to give you things which are your own. If you're not faithful with what God has given you for a little time, how will you be faithful with what is your own? See, when God gives you eternal blessings, when God gives you things in eternity, that is going to be yours and yours alone. But if you're unfaithful here with God's things, what God has entrusted you with somebody else's property, how can God trust you with your own property? See, so that's the clue that Jesus is trying to tell us. So are you faithful in the little that God has given you. You'll say, oh, I don't have many talents. I have only two talents. So Jesus says, okay, you have two at least. What are you doing with that two talents? Are you making a name for yourself? Are you making money out of it? Are you, are you becoming famous with it? Are you taking TikTok videos with it and you know, just wasting your time? Or are you using this talent to the glory of God? Are you leading, uh, building people, encouraging them, challenging them with the gospel, with the talent that you have? That's the question that God is asking, right? So then he finally ends with this verse. No servant can serve two masters. Imagine that you're traveling on a boat across a river and you have two boats and you want to travel by both boats, okay? You put one leg in one boat and you put the other leg in the other boat. And then the boats start going in two different directions. What will happen to the person who is standing on the boat? Yes, he will get thoroughly wet. He'll fall into the river and he will get wet. The same will happen. You can't serve two masters. Satan is one master or money can be one master and Jesus is the other master. If you serve money, you will not be willing to sacrifice money. Money is your God and everything you do is to get more and more and more money. Now, it doesn't mean that you're a rich person because you love money. No, even the poor people, there are poor people who love only money. So they can also be in this group, right? Either you're serving money and you're greedy after more money, more money, more money, or you're after God, and if you're after Jesus and you're saying, I would sacrifice money any day for the sake of Jesus, then Jesus says, you can serve me truly. Okay? If you are serving Jesus, you can't serve money. You can't be greedy after money. But if you serve money, you can't serve Jesus. That is a lie. You can't serve two masters at the same. Why? Because you will be devoted to one and you will hate the other. You will be devoted to making more money and you will hate Jesus. You will either love Jesus or you will hate Jesus, depending on whom you are serving. So check our hearts to see who's the, who's the God of your life. Is it things of the world? Is it money? 
is it fame is it popularity is it you know a power you are you looking for authority what what is your god or is it jesus if it is jesus then you'll be willing to sacrifice anything for him but if it is any of these things you'll be willing to sacrifice jesus for that see so that is the irony of the matter so jesus says you can only serve one master in your life don't try to put your leg in two boats you will crash you will fall into the river and get wet let's pray heavenly father we want to thank you because god is telling us to be wise in this generation to use our time to use our talents and to use our resources wisely so that we can lead more and more people to the kingdom of god help us not to waste it oh lord father help us not to be people who are greedy who run after money god has entrusted this to us for a little time and we have to give account of every penny that we spend help us to use it wisely help us not to serve two masters but to serve jesus alone and let let that be our willingness to sacrifice the money that we have for the sake of the kingdom of god for the sake of jesus christ we thank you and we praise you in jesus name amen